Afternoon all, it's Monday, September the 21st, 2020. Hope you've had a good start to the week and I hope your week goes really well. Again, two weeks it's been since I've been sitting here in the garden, um, so apologies for that, just extremely busy at work, other stuff going on. But hopefully here we are with the stats and what's going on in Florida and the US as far as COVID-19 and any prospect of people getting back into America from overseas is concerned. So let's get straight into it. US daily cases then, stats are from Saturday, okay, so a couple of days out. Um, we had 43,500 cases on Saturday. That's more than we've had previously, uh, recently. We, we hit a post peak low of 35,217, so we're a bit above that. That was on September the 12th. Hopefully now we're gonna come back onto a downward trend, but it is going up at the moment. US active cases hit a peak on September the 1st, which is good news, and it's kind of been holding steady, you can see in the main news points that there is a kind of ripple going on at the moment so um, hopefully that will start to dip soon and that will be really good news. Uh, US deaths were 657 on Saturday and that is trending down overall from the second peak which was on August the 1st. Florida daily cases 3,573 on Saturday and the trend has been about the same since around August the 29th so we don't seem to be doing too much different now so I guess the cases are kind of on the same trend if we're not going to do anything to keep them down they're going to keep going at around the same rate i suppose although good news on active cases active cases now have begun to drop in florida and at a good pace it looks like as well so if we get less active cases that together with the r rate which is still at um 1.01 that really hasn't changed in the last couple of weeks so you take less active cases with an r rate of around one and i'm guessing that the number of cases that we're having daily now at three and a half thousand should start to come down as well. That will impact on hospitals and that will eventually impact on deaths. So just looking at um, looking at deaths, 62 reported on Saturday, but don't forget they aren't the deaths that day. They are an amalgam of that day plus a few other days in between. So 62 on Saturday and they do tend to be lower on the weekend as well. We did get down to a seven day moving average of 77 on September the 8th. Um, before getting back up to 124 we're now down to an average of 99 so that is kind of fluctuating a little bit but you know anything under 100 is better than it has been so long may that continue florida ranks number three behind california and texas florida is the third most popular state in the u.s so unless something dramatic was happening to, to take us down below three three is kind of where we're going to be uh, orange county is number number five behind miami-dade broward palm beach and hillsborough the stats, good news on stats then is the positive rate um, on tests is under 5%. Now, it's been under 5% for the past couple of weeks. That's really good. I, I, I'm told anything under 10% is good news. So anything under 5% must be really good news. So hopefully that will keep going like that. Hospitalizations are also down, but deaths are not down. I, I guess that they're going to take a little couple of weeks maybe to, to come behind hospitalizations, but hopefully we'll see deaths coming down as well. ICU beds up a little bit the availability is up a little bit around 50 more than it was two weeks ago with 1671 beds available as of last night um, us r rate the um, reproductive rate 21 states now have an r rate under one and florida ranks number 26 although florida hasn't gone up in terms of its r rate at 1.01 it has fallen four places which means that's good news because other states have come in and taken their place, which means that their our rate has fallen either well below that of, of Florida. So that, that is good news. Schools have been back now for a month and there have been a number of cases where children and or staff have been sent home because either somebody's got COVID or they've been in touch with or in contact with somebody who has. No stats are being provided by Florida on how many cases have come out of school, so we don't know what the contribution rate is from schools right now. Bars reopened last Monday at 50% capacity. You will remember that they did reopen and then were quickly shut down again, and I'm going to come on to why that may have been. Capacity in restaurants may also be increasing past the current 50%. Uh, DeSantis talked last week about maybe pushing it up to 70% and that the restaurants would know best what to do so watch this space for that and children's playgrounds in orange county and um and in and, um, orlando opened over the weekend so there's around 150 playgrounds between the two 
I don't know what the capacity for kids is, but they've reopened um, at 50% capacity and we'll see where that takes us in terms of new cases. At the University of Central Florida, one fraternity and one sorority were suspended for breaking UCF rules on social gathering. Uh, so UCF was at the epicenter of quite a major outbreak of COVID-19 when the bars had reopened. One particular bar in the UCF area contributed heavily to that and that was part of the reason why the bars were closed down again. So UCF frats and sororities don't seem to have learned their lesson. They do seem to be flouting the rules and I, I just wonder when it will be, if it will be, that all frats and sororities may be suspended for a time but at the moment it's just one of each. Into Disney news, a man was banned from all Disney property last week for refusing to wear a mask. He represented a church in the area and thought that wearing masks should be up to the individual. Disney decided that wasn't the case and it hasn't been the case for a while. He said he had asthma and quoted the ADA, the, the um, American with a Dis Disability Act. Disney don't, doesn't go by di the ADA. Disney has its own rules and states that everybody at, two age, at the age of two and over must wear a mask. So just beware if you are of a mind not to wear a mask, Disney will not take kindly to that. Um, unfortunately there's been more layoffs at both Disney and SeaWorld. Disney's Swan and Dolphin Hotel laid, up, laid off over 100, sorry, 1100 employees last week and SeaWorld terminated the employment of almost 1900 people. Universal haven't made any permanent furloughs but they have extended the furloughs of over 5,000 workers there at Universal Orlando. Some big news that was coming around last week was that the enhanced screenings at the 15 airports that people were allowed to come into, international travellers were allowed to come into, was suspended um, by the CDC last week and people got very excited that that may mean that the borders were being opened. It, it didn't mean that and it, and it doesn't mean that for the time being. Um, all it means that is that there were 700,000 people screened, went through enhanced screening, 15 people were found to have COVID-19, so that is a very, very, very small percentage of people. So the CDC have decided that it's basically not worth the time and effort, resources and money that it takes to do that, and it's now scrapped that. What it doesn't mean is that um, the Presidential Pro Proclamation 9996 has been rescinded, it hasn't, and 9996 means the suspension of entry from for, of people in certain countries so the UK, Ireland, the Schengen countries and a number of others are still on that list so if your if your um, travel emanates from starts from one of those countries you still can't come into the US and there's been nothing in the news that has changed that in the past couple of weeks I've seen nothing about that um, I've included the uh, park availability calendar for Disney for the rest of September all of October and November so if you are looking at coming to Disney in those three months then please do have a look at that. That is the major headline so if you're new to the channel please do subscribe hit that notification bell press all you'll get this stuff once every couple of weeks hopefully a bit more than that coming up I, I may try and, and uh, do a bit more than that if I can um, but do hit that notification bell you'll get this news anyway of COVID-19 and what's going on in Disney and surrounding areas. Okay let's get to the news. The number of US daily cases on Saturday was 43,509. We get a post peak low of 35,217 on September the 12th, but it's been moving up since then. For active COVID-19 cases in the US, we hit a peak on September the 1st, and it's been holding pretty steady since then. 657 deaths were recorded on Saturday across the US, and this is trending down overall from the second peak, which was hit on August the 1st. In Florida on Saturday, 3,573 new cases were reported. The trend has been about the same since August the 29th. For active cases in Florida, the peak was 538,164 on August the 29th. Since then, it's been reducing almost on a daily basis, and on Saturday it was 466,197. 62 deaths were reported in Florida on Saturday. We got down to a seven day moving average of 77 on September the 8th before getting back to 124. We're now down to an average of 99 and the trend is down. With our 3,573 new cases, we ranked third behind Texas and California on Saturday. In Florida, Orange County had 195 new cases and we sit behind Hillsborough, Palm Beach, Broward and Miami-Dade. Turning to the stats and you can see the new numbers highlighted in red. 
The stats to pick out this week are the positive rate and the number of hospitalizations. The positive rate peaked on week commencing July the 14th and every week since then it's come down. We're now at 4.46% positive this week. With two days of this week still to go, we're at 1,000 hospitalizations, so we may beat last week, but we'll still be below, or should be below, the week commencing 1st of September. With the positive rate going down, this should lead to less hospitalizations, which should in turn lead to less deaths. The number of ICU beds across the whole of Florida as of last night was 1,428 adults and 243 paediatric for a total of 1,671. That's up by around 50 since two weeks ago. The effective reproduction rate in Florida is currently at 1.01. We did get down to 0.95, but it's been stable for almost a month now. Looking at the R-rate chart for the US as a whole, 21 states now have an R-rate of under 1. Florida ranks number 26. Although the R-rate in Florida has remained almost the same for the last two weeks, we've dropped four places, which means that more states are reducing their R-rate. It's been reported that coronavirus cases in children are up 26% in Florida since schools went back. There is no data from the Florida Department of Health though to say how many of those children are actually in school and how many are not. It's therefore impossible to say what the additional number of cases are as a result of kids returning to school. Bars across Florida have been allowed to reopen since September the 10th at 50% capacity. Prior to that a bar would have had to have food sales of over 50% to be allowed to open. It looks likely that our restaurants are going to have increased capacity very, very soon. Governor Ron DeSantis says he has no evidence that 50% capacity is better than 70% or that 6 feet social distancing is better than 3 feet and said restaurants would know best. Children's playgrounds have been closed in Orange County and Orlando since March. The city of Orlando has 47 playgrounds and 15 fitness stations and they reopened on Friday. Orange County has 118 playgrounds and they reopened on Saturday. Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer and Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings have both said they'll monitor health data to see if any outbreaks are linked back to playgrounds. The University of Central Florida, the nation's second largest university, has suspended one fraternity and one sorority for breaking their policies. Sigma Alpha Epsilon was placed on interim suspension for allegedly hosting a large social gathering off campus that willfully disregarded the university's COVID-19 policies. Zeta Tau Alpha was placed on interim suspension for allegedly hosting an unapproved social gathering on campus. Last week a man was trespassed from Disney property after refusing to wear a mask at Disney's Hollywood Studios. He incorrectly cited the Americans with Disabilities Act and the HIPAA Privacy Act. The United States Department of Justice said the ADA does not provide a blanket exemption to people with disabilities from complying with legitimate safety requirements necessary for safe operations. Disney has maintained that each and every guest and cast member must wear a mask while on Walt Disney property, ages two and over. The Swan and Dolphin Hotel at Disney World has announced it's going to lay off 1,136 employees. The Swan and Dolphin is one of several hotels at Disney still not yet to reopen after COVID. Also last week SeaWorld announced that it would lay off 1,896 employees across its parks and corporate office in Orlando. Universal Orlando has not announced any new permanent layoffs. It has extended the furlough though of 5,389 of its employees. Last Monday the Centre for Disease Control, the CDC, ended its eight month rule that all passengers must enter through one of 15 designated airports and undergo enhanced screening. In those eight months nearly 700,000 people were screened and only 15 of them were found to have COVID-19. This does not mean however that the US government have lessened restrictions on who can enter the US. This has been taken from the US Embassy and Consulates in the United Kingdom in its FAQ section. Presidential Proclamation 9996 prohibits the entry of foreign nationals who have been present in any one of the countries named on this list in the last 14 days prior to their entry or attempted entry into the United States. Looking at the Disney availability calendar for theme park tickets guests for the remainder of September and it's just the 27th where Disney's Hollywood Studios is unavailable. For day ticket holders in October 2020, it's looking pretty good. Just Disney's Hollywood Studios again, unavailable for those days in yellow. All parks are open for theme park ticket guests on Halloween. Into November and Thanksgiving week is starting to fill up a little bit, but it's only Hollywood Studios that's unavailable to theme park tickets guests. For resort guests next Saturday, the 26th of September is sold out completely. And the 27th has some restrictions with Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios being unavailable. 
for October, just those dates in yellow sees Hollywood Studios unavailable, everything else is available for the whole of October, including Halloween. November for Disney Resort guests and that's Thanksgiving week again filling up a little bit with Hollywood Studios unavailable for all those days marked in yellow. For annual pass holders, the next weekend, the last weekend of September 26th and 27th is sold out. Other than that, the worst day to go would be the 25th where Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios are no longer available for annual pass holders. Park availability for annual pass holders in October is quite variable, so if you are going you need to look at the particular date. Halloween just sees Epcot open for annual pass holders. Into November then for AP holders and you can see that the week of Thanksgiving hasn't filled up at all yet and that's because the AP holders will be still going through their allocation of reservations but we will see that filling up very shortly I'm sure. Just a couple of things to pick up on then is that the number of active cases is going down and that's fantastic news and we couple that together with the R rate and I just hope that other states R rates get down. Some of them are still in the 1.1s and 1.2s. Um, a lot of this has to do with New York, sorry, um, yeah, the state of New York, California and Florida. Those are the three most popular states. If we can all get our R rates below one, then that will be a really good basis of other states getting their R rates down or visitors not coming back with COVID-19 to those states that they've come from. Um, under 5% positivity rate, again, really good. And we need to keep it like that. Hospitalizations will then go down and we then will get less deaths for certain. So not much more to say. It really is positive news. The whole thing over the past couple of weeks has been positive. We're looking for that uh, um, peak of, of uh, active cases in the US now to stop being a ripple and to start going down. That will be major news then and I hope to bring that to you very, very soon. Okay, that's it. Have a great rest of your week, guys. Please do drop me a comment in, the, in that comment section if you wish. I'll try and respond to it as quickly as I can. Up until then, have a great week and see you soon. Bye-bye.